In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a linear regression model in Python using the scikit-learn package. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is head over to the GitHub page of the data professor and then click on the code, find Python folder, click on that, and then find linear regression, click on that, and right click on the raw link, save link as, and then save it into your computer. Or alternatively, if you want to open up in Google Colab, just open up a notebook and then click on GitHub, search for Data Professor. And find Linear Regression. And click on that. Okay. Because I have already opened it up, so we're going to use this one. Okay, so we're going to build two linear regression models. So the first linear regression model will be based on the diabetes data set. And the second one is the Boston housing data set. So the first data set is a built-in data set provided by scikit-learn. And the second data set is going to be downloaded from GitHub. And it's the same data set that has already been used in one of the earlier tutorials in this YouTube channel, where we built a simple linear regression model in the R language. So today we're going to use the same data set, but we're going to use Python to build it. Okay, so let's get started with the first data set. So let's load up the diabetes data set. And so the first thing that we want to do is import the library. And so from the scikit-learn package, we're going to import the data set. And then the actual data set will be loaded by using datasets.load underscore diabetes. And we're going to assign that into the diabetes variable. And when we type in diabetes, we're going to see the description of the variable. And so this is in the JSON format. And the first section that we see is called DESCR, which is the description. And then we have the feature names. And then we have the target, which is the Y variable. And also the data, which is the X variables. Okay, so let's have a look at the description of the diabetes data set. So print and inside as argument, we're going to use diabetes.descr. And so here is the description of the data set. And so the first 10 variables will be the x variables and column 11 will be the y variable, the one that we will predict. And so we see that the first four variables are shown here, age, sex, body mass index, average blood pressure, and then the sixth remaining descriptor will be coming from the serum properties of the blood. Okay, and so we're going to print the feature names again. Okay, and now we're going to create the X and Y data matrices, and we're going to assign it into the X and Y variable. So diabetes.data will go to the X, diabetes.target will go to the Y. And so in order to look at the data set dimension, we're going to use the dot shape function. And so here we see that there are 442 rows and 10 columns for the X data matrix and 442 rows and one column. And so here we see that we created the data set in two steps. The first step is to load in the data set and assign it to diabetes and then from diabetes, we segment it into X and Y by using diabetes.data, diabetes.target. But we could also do the same thing by using it in one step. And so we're just going to add this as the argument. Return X, Y equals to true. Okay. So for now, we're going to skip this block of code for the Boston data set. Let's click on it. Okay. We're going to hide it for the time being. And then we're going to proceed to the data split. Okay, so notice that if you see that there is no data shown, you click on the drop arrow here in order to uncover the hidden cells. Okay, and click on them. And then right now we're going to split the data. And before doing that, we're going to import the necessary library. So I like to let you see which library functions we are using in the proper location instead of importing all the libraries at one go at the top. So you probably won't know which function is used for which step. So after loading in the library, we're going to do the actual split and we're going to assign it to four variables, x train, x test, 
Y train, Y test. Okay, and then the data split ratio will be 80 20. Okay, so 80% will go to the training set and 20% will go to the testing set. Okay, and after doing the data split, we're going to look at the data dimension. Okay, so xtrain.shape will have 353 rows, 10 columns, and xtest.shape will have 89 rows, 10 columns. So 353 will correspond to 80% of the 400 and 42 rows, which is the full data set, and 89 is the 20%, okay? Okay, now let's hop over to actually building the linear regression model. So now we're going to import the library that are necessary to build the model. So from sklearn import linear model, and from sklearn.metrics import mean squared error and r squared score. So the first row will allow you to build the linear regression model. And the second line of code here is the library that will allow you to compute the performance of the model. And so the first step in building the model is we're going to assign the linear underscore model dot linear regression function into the model variable. And then the next step is to actually build the model by using model and then dot fit function. And as argument, we're going to use x underscore train and then y underscore train. So that is essentially defining the input for the model building, x and y variables. So let's build the model. Okay, now the model has been built. So as we have seen in the previous line of code, we're using the 80% of the data as the training set to build the model. And then we're going to assign the built model in order to make the prediction here on the 20% of the data set. And then we're going to assign the resulting prediction into the variable name y underscore pred. Okay, so now the prediction has already been made, and now let's have a look at the model performance. So this block of code will print the coefficients, which is stored in the model.coef underscore, and the y-intercept is stored in model.intercept and then underscore, and then the mean squared error is stored in the mean underscore squared underscore error. And as argument input, we're going to use the y underscore test and y underscore pred. So y test is the actual value, y pred is the predicted value. And then the r squared value or the coefficient of determination is going to be using the r2 underscore score function. And as import argument, we're going to use the y underscore test and y underscore pred. Okay. And so that gives us the coefficient of the linear regression model and the y intercept and the mean squared error and the coefficient of determination. So the coefficients here are representing the weight values of each of the 10 variables that we see here. So let's take the feature names and then let's print it in a location nearby. Okay, so these are the coefficients of these variables. Okay, and the y-intercept is 153. Okay, so essentially it is like this. y equals to minus 3.38 times h, okay, and then the second value is minus 263, it's like that, multiply by sex, and then plus what, 565, 489, multiply by the BMI, okay, and then etc, etc, until we get the intercept of 153.556, okay? So that's the equation for this linear regression model. We're just going to leave it at that and then hop on to the next part. And so notice that the code here, we use the percent dot two F. So probably you're wondering what is that? So let me explain it in more detail here. It is used for string formatting. And so by default, when we use the R2 underscore score function, it will return a floating number. And so the floating number is like this. Okay, so the number is 0 0.425629516076253374, right? It's pretty long. And so let's look at the data type. And the data type is float64. So it is a double precision floating number. So for more detail, click on this link. And then the percent that we see is called the modulo operator. So normally in Python, let's say that you have a number 15 divided by 6, you get 2 something, right? And the remainder is 3. Okay, so that percent here is the modulo operator. 
So the modulo operator will be used to format the numbers here. So percent dot three F means that there are three digit decimals that we're going to use. So the full number is here, whereas when we say percent dot three F, it's going to mean that we're going to use three digit decimals. And when it is percent dot two F, we're going to use two digit decimal, right? So instead of this 0 0.5238108336016, we're going to use simply 0 0.52. Okay. So let's make the scatter plot. And before doing that, we're going to have a look at the data. And so the first variable that we're using is called Y test. And so this is how it looks like. And the second variable is called Y pred. Okay. And then we're going to call in the Seaborn package, SNS, and then the function is dot scatter plot. And as input argument, we're going to use the X and Y, which is the Y test and Y pred. Okay, so here is the scatter plot. And let's say that we want to modify the marker. It is default as circles here. And so marker equals to plus, and so it will become a plus symbol. So let's say that you have a lot of data points here. So you can assign alpha to be 0 0.5. So that will make the dots here to be more translucent, right? Because at default, alpha is 1. And when we say alpha is 0 0.5, it will be more translucent. And the benefit is that when two data points are stacked on top of one another, it will become more clear which one is more dense and which area is less dense. Right, because when more data points are clustered close to one another and when they're stacking on top of one another and the highly dense area will be darker color, whereas the less dense area will be lighter color. Okay, so congratulations, you have now built your linear regression model for the diabetes data set. So let's restart and do it for the Boston housing data set. So I'm going to reset this whole notebook by clicking on runtime and then restart runtime. Okay, so the number will be starting over again. Okay, now it's connected. So I'm going to hide the diabetes data set by clicking on it. And then now it says that 15 cells are hidden. Okay, so in this second iteration, we're going to load in the Boston housing data set. And so this Boston housing data set was obtained from the R package, the R package called ML bench. And the function used to generate the data set or load in the data set is data parenthesis Boston housing. So for your convenience, I've also shared the Boston housing data set on the GitHub of data professor. So you can also download it from here. Or you could just simply run the blocks of code in here as well. So let's load in the pandas data frame as PD. Okay, and then we're going to load the Boston housing data set from the GitHub of data professor using the wget command. So whenever you see an exclamation mark, just be aware that you're using bash command to do things. Okay, so the file has been downloaded and let's load in the data set by using the pandas dot read underscore CSV function and in parenthesis we're going to use and then in parenthesis we're going to use the name of the CSV file. And so we're assigning the CSV data into the Boston housing variable. So running that will give us this table. And so the last column is the Y variable, whereas all of the columns here are the X variables. So the next logical step is we're going to split the data set into the X and Y variables. So Y equal to Boston housing dot MEDV, which is the name of the last column. And we're using the last column as the Y variable. Okay, and then we're going to use everything else for the x variable. So we're dropping the last column. Okay, so we're going to use the Boston housing dot drop and then in bracket the name of the column and then comma axis equals to one. Okay, because we're it's in a side by side way axis equals to one It's in a side by side. So one column will be taken out. Okay, it's kind of like here one finger, right? One column gone. Okay, so in the previous video, I've shown you how you can combine data frames by using axis equals to one for a side by side and axis equal to zero if it is stacked. So here, because we want to delete one of the column, it's going to be using the axis equals to one. And so we're dropping the last column out. Okay, now we have the X and Y data matrix and let's perform the data split now. Okay, so let's load in the library. And let's do the 80-20 split. Let's check the data dimension. 
Okay, and indeed there are 80% here and 20% here. Loading the library, define the model, and then build the model. Okay, and so we're going to apply the trained model to make the prediction on the X test variables. And then finally, we're going to look at the model performance. And so the coefficients are here, the intercepts, and the mean squared error, and the R square value. And right here, let's delete this from the previous run. And so similarly, let's look at the column names. So Boston, Housing, so because we're predicting the median value of the house price, MEDV is equal to the coefficient of the first one. So the first coefficient is minus 1.19 and then multiply by the first column name and then the second coefficient is plus 4.98. And then multiply that by the name of the second, right? Because the regression coefficient are the weights of each variable here. Third coefficient is plus 1.94. So I'm making it into two digit decimals. Multiply that by in this, right? And so etc. for the one in between. And then the last one is going to be the y-intercept, 6, 4. Okay, so that's the equation of this model, okay? So here I have already explained about the formatting using the modulo operator where we round off the digit decimals. Okay, and then let's make the scatter plot using the Seaborn package. Let's have a look at the data set, Y test and Y pred. And let's make the actual scatter plot. Okay, changing the representation of the dots to become plus and making it more translucent. Okay, we can even make it like 0 0.2. So we see that in some regions, it's more densely packed than the others, okay? And so it will be slightly darker color, okay? So congratulations, today you have built two linear regression models. Okay, so as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And so please feel free to modify this notebook with a different data set, improvise and upload it to your GitHub in order to build your data science portfolio. So until next time, have fun. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.